Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about PCIe Gen 4 times 4 M2 SSDs. This is the third video I'm recording where we are talking about the latest generation of drives but more precisely we're talking about how each one of these drives compares to the latest release, the Fire CUDA 530 from Seagate. That is kind of the score to beat when you look at all of these different drives that are available right now and Today's video that we are looking at is the MSI Spatium, and that's right, I did look at my notes because genuinely I still have no idea how to pronounce this SSD's title. Spatium, 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 I have no idea, but I'm going to refer to it as the M480, and the M480 from MSI is one of their earliest moves into the world of solid state drives. It makes sense, PCIe Gen 4 times 4 being kind of a gamer's paradise but whether you're a live streamer or just gaming for personal fun some of these latest generation games and how they're able to take advantage of the enormous bandwidth potential of PCIe 4x4 MSI have really done a great thing by introducing their own gamer-led uh, SSD in the M480 and today we're going to look at how the M480 compares with the Firecuda 530 from Seagate and I hate seagulls um we're going to talk about what they've got in common, what they've got that is different, what they've got is the same, and ultimately help you decide which one of these two should be your next big super fast SSD purchase. But before we go any further, let's talk a little bit about what these two drives have got in common, because whether you buy one or the other, I'm pleased to say that you are going to be getting a super, super, super fast SSD that has a lot in common with the other. So first and foremost, as mentioned, these are both PCIe Gen 4 times 4 SSDs. That means that PCIe Gen 4 times 4 has a potential bandwidth of 8,000 megabytes per second um, to play with. PCIe Gen 4 is 2,000 megabytes per second uh, throughput, give or take. And the times 4, you take that number, you times it by 4, 2,000 times 4, 8,000. But bear in mind, bandwidth is the pipe. It is the pipe with which water must flow. And these SSDs are geared and designed and optimized to push as much water or megabytes per second through them one way or the other. So the bandwidth, remember, is the pipe. The water inside is the throughput. And these SSDs can half push a lot of water. Another cool thing they've got in common is they both take advantage of the latest revision of NVMe, NVMe 1.4, which is the most optimized and kind of the latest gen of how NVMe M2 SSD storage works. It's able to be the most efficient and the highest performance they've achieved so far. And although in order to get the top speeds that we're going to talk about today, both in terms of throughput and IOPS that these drives can give, um, you will need to bear in mind that your client system will have to have NVMe 1.4. So whether you have the ability to update that in the BIOS or it's something that your, uh, your client computer manufacturer is able to supply, that's great. But just bear in mind that the high end performance on these is only possible with a supported 1.4 uh, version NVMe port there. Now, both of them take advantage of additional warranty lengths on SSDs. Let's be honest, five years is standard, guys. And yes, both of these drives arrived with five, year, five years of manufacturer's warranty. Although I will highlight, as mentioned before, that the Fire CUDA series arrived with data recovery services inclusive. Three years of data recovery, which again, a lot of small SSD users aren't really gonna take advantage of. If you're not really gonna use this drive's full potential or you're using some of the smaller capacities, it's largely take it or leave it, but on the larger capacities, if you are dealing with large scale video editing, if you are uh, using content creation for YouTube or you're streaming online, whether it's live or pre-recorded, edited, and for later on, those data recovery services may make an enormous amount of difference to your own personal revenue. So to have those included alongside the five years of warranty, to me, is pretty impressive. Now. On top of that, they both arrived with optional heat sinks on board, both of them using quite impressive custom heat sinks as well, I might add. And those heat sinks are required due to the heat that these things can generate, with both of them taking advantage of the Fizon E18 controller, the 18PS5018, one of the latest generation of SSD controllers out there. And unlike some of the in-house ones that we've seen from the likes of um, Samsung, and from WD, this one is more widely available and a few other different vendors able to take advantage of it. And this combined with 3D TLC NAND means that you do get a tremendous amount of performance here. Although I will highlight that the Fire CUDA takes advantage of 176 layer NAND and it looks like 96 layer NAND is being used by the Spatium. But again, 
I'm going to have to look into that a little bit more because I couldn't get a precise answer on that. And all of this combined together leads to whichever of these two drives you do go for after this comparison, you're going to get a damn fine NVMe and two of the fastest NVMe SSDs out there right now in 2021 and more than likely all the way into 2022. But now let's start talking about what makes these drives different. What are their weaknesses and strengths and where do they both excel or fall? In terms of both capacity and price, it's actually very hard to pin these two down. Notwithstanding hardware shortages, semiconductor shortages, everything I've discussed in previous videos, I will say that both of these do have very flexible price points. They're both pretty much at the point of launch and either one of them at the time of recording is not universally available as it stands. Indeed, most of the information in this video does come from official sources and we will be doing extensive testing on both of these drives along with all the other ones from the likes of Corsair, Adata, and of course, comparing them against the likes of WD Black SN850 and the Samsung uh, 980 Pro, we'll be comparing all of those in extensive performance testing later on. But in terms of what these drives bring to the table right now from reported sources, they both arrive at 500 gig, 1 TB, 2 TB, and 4 TB. One of the first, um, uh, Firecuda 530 being one of the first to introduce 4 TB into the PCIe Gen 4 mix, and MSI straight there, bang, with the M480 at 4 TB as well. Pricing, we've only got the official RRP pricing, but it's incredibly similar. Both of these are pretty similar indeed. I think some of the later capacities arguably a little bit more expensive on the Firecuda side of things, something that will be played out later on in the specifications. But in terms of overall capacity available, they've both gone a very similar route. None of them have gone with the smaller 2 TB, uh, 250 GB drives, but both of them covering the kind of staple hallmarks of capacity there, although the price, again, very flexible. And I think after a couple of months, we're going to see these level out a little bit. But I think you can arguably see that the MSIs are probably going to arrive the tiniest pinch lower in price overall, whether it's at launch or within two months since release. But it's what you get for your money. And today I want to talk about value more so than price. Because in terms of value, it has to be said that the Fire Cuda 530 pulls no punches, whether it is because of um, how that NAND working together with the controller, maybe it's a question of SD RAM, in every regard from IOPS to general performance to endurance, the Fire Cuda just smashes it for the rest of this comparison, it has to be said. In terms of traditional read write, um, we're going to go with sequential read and write, it has to be said, hopefully there's a graphic on screen, that the Fire Cuda 530 wins every single round. And this is one of the few cases where the Fire Cuda's lowest capacity, the Fire Cuda 530 at 500 gig, where in almost every other one of my comparisons, I've slated it and just said that the 500 gig is not only the weakest of the bunch, but it's the weakest by a weirdly disproportionate number. In this comparison against the MSI Spatium M480, the M480 at 500 gig is weirdly inconsistent. It arrives uh, with a top read, so read is generally always going to be a higher number, of 6,500, and I'm sure you can see it on screen. But look at that right. 2,850, it's a great number, but they were hitting that speed in previous gen PCIe like two, two and a half, maybe even three years ago. So it's really surprising to me that this drive has arrived on the market with such a arguably and comparatively more rudimentary write speed. And of course, things do get better, and they're not that much lower than the, the Seagate there. What is it, like 150 meg? So it's pretty close together nonetheless. But it's the fact that the write speed and the read speed are low both on the 500 gig that left me a little bit disheartened there. As we go into the larger capacities, you can see the Seagate is hitting 7300 on every other capacity in terms of read, with the right going 6000, 6900 on that um, Seagate Fire Cuda 530, with the um, Spatium hitting 550, uh, sorry, 5500 and 6850 on those larger capacities. Still good, still very good indeed, but weirdly just given they both use that same controller it's surprising to see such a noticeable disparity across all of the capacities and they both use double-sided NAND as well at the larger capacity so 
whether that comes down to the DRAM or whether that comes down to the layers on uh, the individual NAND in that vertical 3D uh, NAND arrangement, that's a weirdly inconsistent range of performance. And obviously, we've got to say that the read and write on the Fire CUDA 530 absolutely smashes it. And this translates even further once you start looking at the IOPS, because the IOPS on the Spatium M480, again, weirdly low by comparison. Again, this is very good at hundreds of thousands, as you can see on screen. But the Fire CUDA just absolutely demolishes it. And although I will say now, as I've done in my other videos, that IOPS is incredibly industry specific as a utility, because it's more about responsiveness and latency, more so than it is real world utilization. And for those of you that will argue that online gaming requires great IOPS, it does to a degree, but lots of online games these days use centralized servers to ultimately bottleneck the whole thing anyway. I've got to say that um, the IOPS there on that Spatium from MSI, the M480, a little bit disheartening there. They're good, they're pretty good, but I would say in a number of cases, they are still comparable to the likes of PCI Gen 3 in some cases, and I'm really surprised that that is not higher than it should be, which leads us neatly into endurance and durability, because if these are going to get hit constantly, you're going to need to know that these can take the hit, and once again, the data, uh, drive rights per day just absolutely mullers it. Again, it's going to be a consistent thread in all of these comparisons, but that fire, the Fire Cuda 530 having 0 0.7 drive rights per day on a modern gen super fast disc like that is really, really impressive, and more than double that of the M480 from MSI there. Now, that isn't to say that the M480 is a bad drive, it really isn't. I think it is going to be one of the drives that's a contender for PS5 compatibility, and I do think it's going to be one of those drives that it is going to be in the shortlist for people's top NVMe as it stands right now. But once you move away from the traditional top end easy, oh, look at that high performance, it seemingly falls back a little bit. And given this is made by a motherboard manufacturer with an enormous emphasis, on fast bandwidth control and throughput on their motherboards, I'm a little surprised. Just not a lot, but a little, given um, the superiority of, say, Corsairs, although Corsair largely associated with memory, and A-Data as well, producing some fine SSDs. The MSI M480 kind of falls by the wayside to the dominance of the 530 here in this comparison, and ultimately, unsurprisingly, the Fire CUDA 530 wins in spades here, even in spite of them sharing that E18 controller overall between the two of them. If you are looking for a nice, um, probably more affordable drive, because I can definitely see the MSI becoming more affordable as a drive as the year continues, then maybe consider it then. But with, re with the exception of a notable 20% more price difference, if you are looking at these comparative in the basket of your local eShop, Go for the Fire Cuda 530. It just brings so much more to the party in terms of long-term endurance, in terms of short-term IOPS, and in terms of overall throughput throughout its lifetime, not just on day one, but throughout. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Next up, we are going to be talking about the Sabrent Rocket Plus in our next video, so do stay tuned for that. But otherwise, if you have enjoyed the video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And do take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares. We are here to help you. We will get, let you know exactly what you need for your data storage requirements, be they gamer, be they editor, be they NAS or more. It's a completely free service. It's manned by myself and Eddie. It may take an extra day or so to answer your queries, but we answer every single one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.